Uh, hello and welcome everyone to the fifth meeting of the Digital Europe Economic Seminars. Uh, today we have the pleasure to guest Carolina Dalacesa of the Arts and Culture Department at the Erasmus University Rotterdam. Uh, Carolina has achieved a master's degree in both cultural anthropology and management and organization studies at the Universidad Federal Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, she's been also managing research projects on culture as part of the Creative Economy Observatory and worked as a community developer for the Apoya crowdfunding platform. She's currently finishing her PhD at the Erasmus University Rotterdam with a focus on digitalization and the new funding model for the arts. And crowdfunding is a topic she has extensively researched and published on, including a call for chapter in the newest edition of the Handbook of Cultural Economics. Uh, so we're going to have approximately 40 minutes for a presentation, followed by some time for questions, but you can also ask questions along the way. Uh, so thank you very much, Karina, for being here, and the floor is yours. Um, thank you, Wojciech. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to talk a little bit about my research and some recent developments. Um, so which I did already a very good presentation of, uh, uh, about myself, so I'm not going to repeat uh, him and that. Um, I will share my slides with you and start presenting um, some interesting remarks about uh, uh, economic geography and crowdfunding. And uh, I will be also available for any questions during the presentation or after. Doesn't matter, you, you can uh, pose questions as you, as you see fit. Um, so let me just share the screen with you. Okay, a minute. So um, this is a work in progress. Uh, my will here is to discuss a little bit about home bias in crowdfunding and uh, the interplay with economic features uh, of crowdfunding in culture and creative industries. So my focus is on culture and creative industries. Um, as Wojciech mentioned, I am a, a PhD candidate at Erasmus University Rotterdam. I'm finishing as I speak my, my PhD thesis, which I will be possibly defending uh, still this year. Uh, who is here with me uh, in this project is me uh, and Guilherme Buco. He's also part of uh, this uh, um, part of the audience here. Also collaborators in this project is Christian Hanke and Maria Alice, who have been uh, gladly giving uh, important suggestions for us in this project. So the main goal here is for us to discuss some aspects related to economic geography of crowdfunding, to how uh, certain uh, aspects, uh, characteristics, economic characteristics of cultural goods impact the um, uh, this, the geographical distance that certain products can achieve or not through crowdfunding. Um, I guess for which I, there is one person in the waiting room. I would like to also briefly mention to you that we are, uh, me and my collaborators were very open for uh, all suggestions you may have, variables that we might have uh, uh, missed, uh, interesting remarks that you have with your own uh, expertise. So as I said, a work in progress and I very much welcome any comments that you have. So um, first of all, crowdfunding has been widely regarded as a, as a call for a broad public provision of public resources or financial resources to support the development of specific novel goods and services. And they can pretty much be used for any purpose, for uh, uh, charitable projects, for non-charitable projects, for uh, profit-oriented ventures, non-profit-oriented. So literally anything uh, that can be possibly related to a demand prospect. And this is a definition we, we quite, uh, quite a lot use in our work by Belle Flam uh, et al. Uh, 2014 that be, gives us pretty much the, the baseline of what crowdfunding is. Uh, there is a burgeoning literature uh, very much uh, every day if, if, we, if we check a web of science, uh, Scopus, we see a new um, article being published. So literally every day there's something new. What we are interested in, as I said before, is discussing CCIs, culture and creative industries, their internal differences, for example, differences with regards to 
reproducible goods, non-reproducible goods, differences with relation to performing arts, non-performing arts, and how they interplay with geography. Um, so the predominant geographical differences, we, we use uh, some interesting words that have been developed in, in home bias uh, discussions in crowdfunding. So for example, Brad Snitz and Noonan have in 2020 an interesting article about that. Mendes da Silva in the journal Culture Economics in 2016, uh, Agraval in 2011, there is, there is plenty different uh, discussions about home bias and crowdfunding, which we also uh, base our work on. We are trying to model uh, the extent to which digital rewards experience good attributes, external credibility signals, uh, endorsement signals, external endorsement signals, which I will further explain later, impact the success and non-success of, uh, of calls. And as I said, their geographical uh, distance too. Um, so we want to know which success factors are related to characteristics, characteristics, characteristics of culture and creative industries as much as to the internal signaling mechanisms. So um, if something is not really clear in my speech, uh, you can always interrupt me. You can uh, make, uh, uh, make a point here if you wish. So first, I'm going to just briefly mention some differences among CCI uh, crowdfunding models. So uh, typically, we work with uh, um, uh, the four uh, different models in, culture, in, in, in crowdfunding, which are donation, reward-based, equity, and peer-to-peer -peer lending. And there are different uh, ways to, to establish these different models, but those are the ones we work with. Um, so to put it shortly, we uh, in this uh, project, we're focused on reward-based crowdfunding, which is the type where by backers of successful calls, they receive a non-pecuniary reward. So there is, uh, this is a non-monetary um, non return to the backer. They will do an investment, but to receive uh, a, a good, a service, or a gift, uh, or a memorabilia afterwards. As we can see in the in the table below, uh, it's typically the case that the CCIs they are very much uh, focused in the reward-based models. So um, we see, for example, filmmaking, arts, music, design, technology. They are very much um, present in reward-based crowdfunding, which is interesting per se. Because what we see is that um, many CCIs, uh, coaching creative industries, most particularly performing arts, they're not present in other models, but the reward based one, which entails us some public good attributes, which shows that um, coaching creative industries, uh, they, they have a particularity of their own. And this table is available in the handbook of culture economics. So you can just uh, see there if you wish. Um, here are some uh, extracts of just general overview of uh, geographies of crowdfunding. Um, we can see that mostly driven by United States, uh, Americas have been the, the, the important player in the figure of, for example, Kickstarter and Indiegogo. We see uh, European countries and we see also Asian countries there uh, because uh, mostly in, in the, on the right side of the picture, mostly because of China. So the Chinese equity and lending market. Um, as for European crowdfunding, for example, with regards to uh, the number the presence of platforms, we see very much the, the, uh, the role of the UK playing uh, very importantly in this market. And here is the presence of online platforms. Um, most of these reports can be found in the, uh, um, the center for uh, the Cambridge Center for Alternative Finances online. So you can search this um, a report yourself if you wish to go a little bit in depth in that. So this is just an overview to show you how we are currently. Um, so some countries, they, they have been uh, more present with their different types of platforms. Um, we can see most of the presence of uh, equity crowdfunding, lending-based crowdfunding, and on a lower level, um, a little uh, uh, more, more, let's say, um, secondary, but not secondary in importance, but just in number of, um, of transactions, the reward-based crowdfunding. Um, so uh, as for our article, what, you're, what we are interested in is assessing differences uh, within the CCIs with regard to 
their predominant geographical differences, the presence of digital rewards, experience good attributes, and credibility signals. By credibility signals here, I mean uh, trying to understand if, for example, media coverages, prizes, festival participations, and any other external endorsement help to boost success. The intuition is yes, it's yes from a number of, of uh, different literature, both in e-commerce, crowdfunding, and just typical funding and investment behavior. So um, this is not exactly counterintuitive, but we want to, to, to get as close as we can to the notion of superstar effects. So if superstar effects are playing an important role in uh, crowdfunding ventures or not here. As for digital rewards, we want to evaluate if after actually these digital rewards are bringing more or less uh, success. So by digital rewards here, I mean having the digital album offered as a reward, having the digital book offered as a reward. And from our experience with our own data set, we have been seeing that uh, even uh, campaigns that uh, tackle a lot digital goods, uh, they have a number of, of rewards that are not necessarily digital. So for example, offering memorabilia, offering different types of things. As for experience good attributes, this is a, dif this is a difficult concept to, to grasp because experience good attributes, as, as if you go in the literature, you see experience goods can be uh, virtually anything in the words of Varian, for example, how Varian. So how we depict experience goods, it's a difficult thing to do. What we were trying is to, is to, to get through this via um, um, experience directly with the um, backer, for example, uh, moments of encounter with the backer, having to go uh, in, a, in a show, having to go on a specific theater play, uh, having these this moments of experience with uh, uh, the product that they are purchasing, pre-purchasing, or any sort of, for example, uh, performing art. So we understand that the, the reasoning here might be a little bit uh, shaky to this moment, but we are trying to develop a better way to, to uh, grasp the, the experience good attributes in our model. So we based in the study in, in, on the single insights that culture and creative industries, they vary in their economic characteristics. So logically performing arts are different than uh, fashion products, they're different than uh, video games, and they have their their economic difference that makes some reproducible more than others. And signaling theory, as we use also in our, um, our work, yelled much of, much of those results that we find in crowdfunding literature, uh, but we, we hardly assess uh, how each type of culture goods show this pattern. So we want to go in depth in this difference. And you can see the support also in various culture economics literature, uh, the notion of credibility signals, the external endorsement signals. I'm going to put available this uh, preliminary paper online, if you wish, uh, to, to go further in depth in, in those references later on. Um, so we did a simplified categorization of culture and creative industries uh, based on Throsby, for example, so Throsby 2008. Uh, in which it develops the concentric circles of culture and creative industries. We took that as an inspiration and uh, just simplified to uh, make uh, use of that in our uh, model. So uh, we divide pretty much here three different sectors. So the core being the visual arts, dance, theater, music performance, other sectors as publishing films, comics and crafts expanded sectors uh, or wider culture industries, if you check uh, Throsby, will be anything related to design technology, fashion, video games, board games. So these um, external parts of the concentric circles of culture industries. And what we see in the, uh, with regards to their differences is as well that um, typically core cultural sectors, uh, performing arts, they have a characteristic of being less reproducible, they're more labor intensive, they have a presence of public attributes and lots of intrinsic symbolic value in the, in, the, in the artwork. And the more we go towards the wider cultural circles, we see more reproducibility, commercially driven aspects of, uh, of cultural goods, information and digital products. So this is where we are setting differences amongst sectors. When we check the, the expected consequences for crowdfunding is that, Typically, visual arts, dance, theater, they will have 
high success rates. Uh, this is already documented in, in Malik 2015. Also, you can check uh, any yearly report by Kickstarter, for example. So lower goals, high success rates, and somewhat limited geographic outreach. But these are expectations, and we wanted to confirm if this is actually happening when we model different areas. So what we did uh, so far is a multilinear regression in which uh, we have the DVS at the amount raised. We have uh, eight, uh, eight, uh, 880 projects in which we manually coded um, the presence of endorsement signals, digital rewards, um, in which we also automatically uh, extracted the distance between founders and funders, meaning each funder, uh, each uh, project founder, uh, so where the city that it comes from, and all the funders from each different city. Uh, we then did a quota sample of 80 projects per cultural sector, so uh, all the sectors available on, on Kickstarter. And each sector was then grouped in three major units, the ones I presented to you before. Then we did the geographical distance between each founder and its funders. Uh, we programmed basically that in R. Um, we manually coded, as I said, endorsement signals, rewards, and experience attributes to check uh, whether these uh, aspects are bringing more or less success. So here is a brief representation of what we, um, what we tried to depict. Uh, we, of course, included some control variables. Uh, we, did the we did the model for moderation uh, with regards to average distance between backers and founders and the total amount raised. And uh, this is, as I said before, to verify if these uh, sectors are impacted in which way the amount raised. I'm going to go a little bit um, faster in our um, depiction of results. I think I'm... I'm supposed to talk for maximum 20 30 minutes is that which well yeah but you know it's up to you basically okay um do i have any question or comment for now uh, that somebody would like to to uh, express or should i go forward i have just one question uh do you look at uh, successful projects or all projects? Oh wait, this is a good question, Richard. So I, I used only uh, successful projects for the reason that um, when, you, when you need to extract the um, uh, cities of funders um, of unsuccessful projects, that becomes a little bit more difficult because you don't have uh, all this information available on Kickstarter or because they weren't successful, just you don't have much data. But um, so when you when you check successful projects on Kickstarter, there is the um, um, section called community. And in community, you will see the uh, 10 first cities and the amount of backers per city. So which makes uh, this uh, modeling more easier. Um, so yes, uh, although this can be seen as a constraint of our study too. Um, some variables and observations, as I said, sector working as a moderator uh, variable in our um, uh, model. The average distance between funders and founders. Uh, the external credibility signals, and as I said, these these signals or endorsement signals, uh, we are calling them media coverage, recognition, uh, blog reviews about the campaign, product or person. So here we are not differentiating if um, these credibility signals uh, are directed to the person who created the project or the product that's being put in the platform because mostly they intertwine. And the way we see that is by checking uh, information being updated on the platform. So. Um, it's not that we are randomly Googling the names of this person, that we are checking this from the campaign updates and comments. Engagement experience, uh, which is simply the presence or absence of it. So uh, if there is any sort of experience that allows the backer to be part of this project, um, there is one person here to get in the room and also digital reward if there is uh, any 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 
type of digital product being offered doesn't matter if this is a um, performing art or non-performing art. So our hypothesis number one is that there was a positive association between the presence of engagement experience rewards and success of campaigns. This was confirmed. So we show that indeed the more uh, engagement experience you offer, meaning the more moments of attachment by the uh, uh, in combination with the backer will uh, bring uh, better funds, will bring more results. Uh, as I said before, the notion of experienced goods here is a little bit, um, deserves a better discussion because experienced goods uh, in its definition, it's a little bit different from what we are modeling here. Uh, but yet, the, the, just the, the presence of these uh, examples of uh, moments where there is a, an experience expected between backers and founders uh, does make a difference. There is a positive association between presence of digital rewards and the level of campaigns. This was not confirmed. So we, we expected that uh, by having more digital rewards offered that the result of campaigns will have been better. This was not confirmed and this can yield different discussions. Number one, uh, maybe increase the sample. Um, maybe this is just what it is, which is uh, which can be due to the fact that um, uh, many, many of, of these campaigns are not necessarily digital by default and therefore the digital rewards are not making so much of a difference here, but in, in, it deserves a further investigation. There's a positive association between external endorsement and signals and the level of campaigns. So confirmed, meaning the more, as expected, the more endorsement signals from any external party, uh, blogs, reviews, uh, prizes, participation in festivals, anything that, that will show an appreciation of that particular project, will give a sign of distinction. It's basically a different signal of distinction to the project, to the product, therefore um, a better, a pot potentially a better quality understanding of that uh, product. And fourth, there is a positive association between geographic distance separating funders and founders and the success of campaigns. And we, uh, we expected that this relationship is moderated by the sector variable such that this is a, there is a positive association uh, stronger for expanded sectors than for other remaining sub subcategories. So this uh, moderation was, the moderation hypothesis was confirmed. What we see in our model is that when we put sector, um, just the sector, those, those three different sectors that we uh, showed before in the, in the table, when we put them isolated, they don't give, they don't yell the result, but when we combine them with uh, in the moderation model in combination with average distance between funders and founders, there is um, a significant uh, results, uh, which is interesting uh, in, in our point of view. So specifically distance had a significant positive impact on the amount of fund raised and therefore the interaction had a significant impact here. Um, I'm not going to go in depth in our uh, table here. It will be available in the paper uh, for anybody who wants to comment later on. We did uh, a few tests to, to further check the uh, reasonability of this model. They um, went fine. So the regression results can be found in previous table. And the step one, uh, our, our variables explain 24% of 27% of the model. And then we increase to 36 both steps were statistically uh, significant. Uh, there was an improvement um, and no overfitting was detected for both regressions. I can go a little bit uh, in depth into these aspects if you need uh, further for further discussions. But instead, I'm going to focus on another um, visual visualization of our data that is interesting when we plot um the three different sectors with regards to distance we see that um those three different sectors they present interesting patterns um as i said not necessarily unexpected but confirmed and interesting in the sense that it shows how um uh, the, the the wider culture industries here 
um, which, which is the blue, the blue line goes completely in opposition to the other sectors. Remember who, who are the wider culture industries here? Wider culture industries are fashion, video games, uh, design technology. And here, what the graph is showing us is that the more there is distance between the founders and funders, the more there is an average amount raised by backers. So better results uh, on that side. Um, completely opposite would be core culture arts and uh, other culture arts, which are basically all the other sectors except fashion, video games, uh, design technology, and board games also. So there is a better outreach of those wider cultural industries, expanded sectors of cultural industries than the core ones. And basically um, the rationale out behind it is not particularly striking as, as well. You, you might agree or disagree with me, but in, uh, if we consider the characteristics, characteristics of uh, performing arts, we know that the closer we are from, from uh, the venture itself, from uh, the theater, for example, from a musical uh, festival close to our house, the better most inclined I would be to, to fund it. So there is less of a chance that I'm going to actually enjoy a uh, theater play in Japan than in my own region. So it's not uh, so uh, different from what we expected. When we see the amount raised plotted on one side and on the other side, the on, on the horizontal line, the distance we see also that wider culture industries they reach uh, strikingly more success. The shady area here are uh, is the part of our data that doesn't does it's not significantly different. So uh, when once we reach more distance in in this graph, we see that differences apply; they're more significant. So wider culture industries, we see that the more uh, there is distance between founders and funders, the more there is amount raised, which, is, which was our expectation in the beginning. So similar to the previous graph, other culture arts and core arts, they show close results, pointing out that it might not be uh, considered as intrinsically different in other sectors as compared to, to wider culture industries, as I said. More interestingly, when distance increases, the amount raised uh, increase uh, for one particular type of section, sector. So as for results, I'm, I'm, I'm going towards the end here. Um, as I said, this is a work in progress and I very much would welcome comments and uh, criticism from you. Um, what we were expecting to understand here is that if economic characteristics of goods uh, depicted in the form of those three different sectors and their uh, digital rewards, credibility signals, uh, um, basically these two and, and digital rewards, they would bring any difference in funding investment behavior. So in accordance to broader crowdfunding literature, the model predicted a significant effect on geographical distance in project category. The first is already uh, seen by the literature, not too different. But project category, the, the, the extent to which sector impacts is somewhat, and especially this uh, categorization we did based on TROS, big cultural uh, concentric circles of uh, uh, culture and creative industries, uh, are somewhat different from previous studies. Uh, in accordance also to the literature in culture economics, endorsement signals, experience rewards, they make a difference. However, unlike the previous literature and the growing importance of digital products for creative sectors, the presence of digital rewards did not significantly impact it in our results. And as I said, this may be due to problem in our model, but this may be due just to the fact that um, they are simply not present and this deserves further investigation. And having at least one endorsement signal campaign leverage the, the results and the, uh, those 30 party signals as it is evident in e-commerce literature, it also is evident in crowdfunding. Um, some aspects to continue uh, studying crowdfunding and also most critically to CCI. Um, asymmetric information and quality uncertainty at crowdfunding stage, they don't necessarily um, change uh, with crowdfunding. So on the more 
conceptual uh, in depth level, um, crowdfunding does not necessarily resolve the, the asymmetric information and, and quality and certainty. Uh, it just unveils more uh, ventures, more different types of projects, and therefore um, what projects are trying to do is reducing their asymmetric information. Uh, we, we would be interested in having more discussions with regards to long tail and superstar effects and crowdfunding. Maybe somebody here has an interesting view of how to uh, depict, how to uh, understand superstar effects of crowdfunding. Um, online funding behavior is not frictionless. So this is something, has, as I said, has been already mentioned in the literature. Thomas, uh, I will uh, just finish the slide before, before we go to questions. Um, online, so as I said, online funding behavior is not frictionless. Uh, therefore, differences with regards to types of projects, uh, geographical distance, they do apply. And some characteristics, I believe they matter beyond the possibilities of internal uh, campaign signaling. So uh, the main, the main uh, rationale and motivation behind the study was to see factors that are beyond the internal signals that are portrayed on a crowdfunding campaign. And by that, I mean simply the text, the length of the text, the presence of the video, the amount of rewards, which are things typically depicted in, in studies and, and which yield success. They bring interesting results, but we wanted to go further than that and see whether the, the products have the characteristics of those products, they make any, any result here. Um, and that's it for now. Um, we have here also Guilherme who's around, also be available for um, answering questions. Um, I can go back to the slides if necessary. I think we have a first comment by Thomas. Thank you very much. And uh, please, Thomas, go ahead with a question. <coughs> Yes, hello. Um, thanks for your very interesting um, uh, presentation. Um, yeah, I, I had a question, maybe about your model, because uh, and about your dependent variable. I mean, I'm a bit uncomfortable with that choice because, I mean, you look at the the, the amount raised on the left hand side, but uh, is it the right measure? Because, uh, I mean, for example, for theater project, I mean. Most entrepreneurs, I mean, they have a limited number of, uh, of tickets, basically, and when this is reached, this is a success, and that's it. There is not really um, a scope to go beyond the, the goal, right? Uh, so I was wondering whether you, and, and, and I, I have the impression that maybe your model, what your model really captures is, is a size effect. I mean, a technology category and those categories, uh, or games or whatever, I mean, uh, Usually the projects are, are much bigger. They, I mean, the, the, the amount required I, I, is much better. It, it's much, uh, it's much higher than uh, for the theater project, for, for example. So, so maybe you may want to look at more at the. I mean, it, this has been documented in the literature, right? That and especially in the, the Molix paper that uh, usually um, a success uh, happen by a small uh, margin. Usually when the, the target goal is uh, is reached it's done it's a success and here because you only focus on success on successful uh, project maybe you, sh you should look at yep. the, the amount raised relative to the target or something like that but I, I, I would be more convinced by your result because now i just have the impression that you capture a size effect and yeah yeah i understand i have i have the same um issue and we try to go around that by including the the variable go fraction uh, so that would be a, a measure um, that it's it's the amount raised uh, uh, divided per goal. Therefore, it would it would make take into account the fact that different uh, projects they just have different goals, and therefore you know it's not necessarily about the amount raised. Um, what our, our problem was basically that um, as we chose successful projects. Uh, this difference also is not very much um, present in our data set. So as all projects, they reach success, the margins that they reach are lower as uh, specifically for performing arts, as you even say, projects are successful by lower margins as we already know in the literature. Um, 
it makes us uh, it makes it a little hard to 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 find a um, finding a, a hard to depict the best way with that. The one possible solution we were thinking is to divide the study in two, such that geographical dis uh, distance is one thing, and the and and the and the other parts of the study, meaning the other uh, variables, which then we can use go fraction, um, make more sense. Why is that? Because in if we include the problem of geographical distance in our model, uh, we have to include mostly successful projects because this is the data that's available at least in Kickstarter. So we either um, either separate the study or we increase the data set in in a way that we can actually depict amount raised uh, in some way. So I actually abide by your uh, critical view on the on the um, like, well, on that. Possible is just a, what you mean by success, because as long as you reach the, the target goal, it's a success, right? I mean, you the entrepreneurs can take the money and and uh, and and run the, the the business with with the money, right? So 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 it's more about your definition of success here. You are just focusing on, on successful project. Yeah. Look at how much do they. Uh, generate as a uh, in, in total so, so this is slightly different uh, than well, at success versus uh, failure and, and and then again it's you are likely to capture it, it, i would be interested to see your summary statistics to to see whether first to see whether in the, the group of uh, technology categories etc what is the average amount raised as compared to the theater project for example yeah and then maybe you may want also to to look to think of because you are talking about the superstar Effect yeah. So maybe it's also something to, to look at actually. Absolutely. At yeah. The original big success, for example, that the, the ones at the at the outliers, like creating a, a variable equal to one, for example, if the the goal is reached by, uh, I mean, is uh, I don't know, they, they reach way more money than the, than the target goal. That could be something interesting to look at, and you may want also to look at. I don't know whether it, it would fit in your study, but because now you already know a lot, right, about. Uh, uh, success factors, etc., especially in a static way, as you as you look at, uh, maybe to think as well of uh, collecting data on the um, post campaign success of the of of the project. Uh, yeah, something that you may want to uh, to look at to also increase interest in the in the study. Good, thank you very much. Um, just two points here, I guess. One way to go forward to try to solve some of these issues would be, as I said, uh, including another DV, um, which will be, in my view, go fraction. In that way, I think the studies might be separated. Um, second, about superstar effects, that was the initial rationale indeed, to uh, have ways to, to depict superstar effects in a way that's not too wobbly, um, because it's also a concept that that uh, it's hard to grasp on a, um, on a detailed level. Um, thirdly... Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. So, sorry, just to, to come back to, on the super stack effect, one thing that we usually observe is that in categories where there are a lot of uh, big success, especially in, uh, in projects that relates to cultural goods, etc., uh, usually they tend to those categories at least around the time where they were a very big success, they tend to also attract much more backers, etc., and increase the probability of, uh, of getting uh, a finance as, as well. So uh, having a, a superstar project, or I don't know how to call it, in a category or so, can also increase the, the activity on the platform in that, that category at, at a specific point in time, and then increase the, the amount raised on, the, on other projects. So you, you see oh, yes, you're, you're talking about cross effects amongst projects within the same category. That's indeed a good point. Uh, this is also an interesting way to see superstar effects too. As for your third comments on, on seeing the statistics, um, I have appendixes, appendices on, the, on the, this preliminary paper. And when, when I put it online, it will be available to check that out too. Um, including outliers, including things that would uh, make it clear for, for our discussion. So anyway, I would like to thank you very much, Thomas. This is really relevant comments you, you made um, for further Im improvement of, of the paper. Thanks a lot.
Do we have uh, other questions? I think we have a question from Anders, but please go ahead. Uh, hello, uh, Carolina. Thank you very much for your presentation. No, I was just um, thinking about something here, uh, your simplified categorization of product and some potential effects you might see depending on category based on those because if you take, for instance, uh, the geographic reach of a project and you consider whether reach can be modified by, by other factors, say, or other types of signaling, say, for instance, project characteristics uh, I'm referring to particularly, say, for instance, if you have a performing art or a literature project and that specific project has a language which isn't necessarily English, which is the main language on Kickstarter, how would that sort of, um, uh, to a certain degree, modify the potential interest or the potential reach or the potential funding success of a project? Uh, because if you look at smaller market European countries where English isn't necessarily the dominant language, it means that for certain types of your cat categories, Kickstarter might not even maybe be the first uh, platform of choice because language or cultural affinity with the project in itself might have a moderating effect on the scope. Well, on the other hand, if you say have a fashion or a technology project or a project which where communication is much more visual, potentially then the project uh, is not impeded in the same way in terms of potential geographic reach because I mean, um, a more sort of visual project might not sort of be held back in terms of scope by language or those kind of uh, culturally specific bound to a specific country type of project. And the third thing uh, I wanted to mention is that have you considered that say for instance uh, there is I think there is research and some statistics on this uh, which I can facilitate that uh, Kickstarter is uh, for board games, for instance, a very established platform, meaning that if you want to do a crowdfunding campaign for a board game, uh, you would obviously then think about Kickstarter, which means that there might be some bias as the established market for those kind of projects and also, should we say, uh, uh, multiple supporters, there is already a community of people interested in board games on the platform in itself and that Kickstarter, another platform, might then show difference, should we say, uh, uh, effects. Thank you. Thank you, Anders. Um, thanks a lot for your comments. Um, I will first start with the first with, with the first thing you said, and then maybe we go to the next ones. Um, yes, we can, we we discussed the fact that language must be uh, a way to uh, the big proximity. And this was the reason why we went to Kickstarter as the ultimately an, an international platform that has uh, more international outreach than any European platform. And uh, that most of the projects are uh, in English. So um, we actually decided to focus on basically the US based platform Kickstarter and English based uh, projects to see whether excluding um, language at this moment, it would bring results with regards to those characteristics of cultural and creative um, uh, products. So as I said before, we were focusing on the categorizations of these uh, of this coaching and creative industries based on the simplify categorization I put before. And I guess a further way to deepen the study would be to include variables other than any specific economic characteristic of a product. Therefore, whether um, trust and proximity are related to language and they are, it has been also documented in the literature. So, uh, if we tested simply uh, language as a proximity and the fact that it brings home bias, it wouldn't be necessarily a new result because per se it depicts a proximity already. Um, what we wanted to see in the study was, was something else, is uh, whether the moderation of this uh, three different uh, big sectors, they bring any different result in crowdfunding. Um, as we showed before, it does, it does bring a difference. Um, 
but I would I I believe that a better way to further uh, deepen the analysis of proximity would be to include other variables, as I said, variables that depict better cultural proximity, for example. We did not deal with cultural proximity. And I think you're completely right on your comment regarding that. Uh, could you come back, if possible, to the last point you made on board games? What, what was your main question? Uh, no, the main question there was simply the fact that uh, uh, in terms of bias, because uh, crowdfunding board games is more or less synonymous with uh, with uh, crowdfunding with the Kickstarter, because Kickstarter is such an established platform amongst the hundred of crowdfunding platform for actually um, crowdfunding uh, board games. Meaning that uh, if you had another platform, say for instance, uh, you wouldn't necessarily have the same community or the same group of people interested in board games which already are present on the platform and are sort of multiple backers or patrons of campaigns. So a lot of people uh, crowdfunding board games tend to migrate to crowdfund uh, to Kickstarter because Kickstarter is such an important channel. It's a bit like sort of if you want to publish a game, you use Steam, for instance, because it is an established brand as a type of platform. You wouldn't consider alternatives, in a sense. Yes. If, I, if you understand. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I guess the, the best way to go about it would be a comparison between platforms also. So I think it's, it's logically that the case that uh, certain products, they yield better uh, results in different types of... Uh, platforms and uh, we see also from European uh, context that um, they uh, in, in certain cases we already see a fan group uh, um, um, patronage uh, based of already being created on those platforms and we can also cite patron in that although the system is a little bit different uh, than a typical crowdfunding platform yet is a subscription crowdfunding type of thing um, so I think the way to go about it will be comparing those different platforms and making sure the, uh, we, we model the differences amongst dif uh, different regions. Um, although I don't think that necessarily undermines the results uh, of those of these different categorizations we did with regards to three different sector sectors. So the fact that in other platforms, uh, we have fan base groups that are mostly interested in gathering there and supporting a project, doesn't undermine the fact that in other international platforms, there are certain projects that will reach higher or lower um, this average distance between founders and funders. As you said yourself, Kickstarter, sometimes it's seen by creators as, as the end goal of their own project, of their career in crowdfunding. Of course, after crowdfunding, as also Thomas mentioned, it's interesting to see what is the success after you have, after you have success. So what happens with the venture after that, which also depicts success, but not restricted to the platform of crowdfunding. And, but, but I believe that Kickstarter has a different, um, uh, different setting in that it's the most international in coaching creative industries that we know so far. So I, rest, I, I bring forth the importance of um, still studying Kickstarter, even though there are so many studies developing, uh, developed based on Kickstarter too. Per perhaps a good way to go about it would be a comparison amongst different platforms and regions, which we did not do in the study. Uh, but it's uh, it's an important way to go forward. So in a nutshell, I, I agree and I abide by what you're saying. Um, we just have not included this in our study for the reasons uh, that I depicted before, a focus on two different sectors, focusing on international platform, on English speaking, etc. Thank you, Anders. Thank you, Carolina. Uh, thank you very much. Uh... Perhaps we have room for a very quick question, if anybody has one. I think we have one more by Anders. Uh, I have asked my questions now, so thank you, Carolina. Okay, oh, it's because you have your, your uh, hand raised there. Okay, uh, Thomas? Yeah, if I may, uh, so sorry. Uh, but. Um, 
I mean, maybe it would, because I mean, one of the very first study on crowdfunding was uh, based on um, on data from Celaband, uh, which is uh, also a, a crowdfunding platform that went bankrupt, that is bankrupt now. But uh, I mean, it was really uh, 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 in the arts uh, industry. So it would be good maybe to to contrast your finding with that study because I mean, it also uh, joins the, um, the 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 remark of uh, of. Uh, uh, um, Anders, sorry, uh, about the external validity and whether your findings apply in uh, other contexts, other countries, etc. And, and that one is a, it's an Amsterdam-based uh, platform. So it would be just good to see whether the, the average distance between the founder and the funders is, uh, is similar, etc. And uh, so maybe it's a good way to, to, to also uh, position your, your paper and to, and to see to what extent you are uh, we learn something different uh, in uh, in the US context and in the context of, uh, of Kickstarter, uh, which is a platform that uh, own uh, arts and creativity based uh, uh, project, but also uh, more technology and uh, entrepreneurial uh, project. So. Thank you, Thomas, for your suggestion. Um, we did include the work of, um, of Agraval uh, regarding Celeband in our uh, theoretical framework, discussions of home bias, etc. And um, I think it's very important that you, what you're saying with regards to, to, to making the contrast clear or the combination with those results clear, which um, I will take further note for my paper. Um, the difference also here is that whereas I'm seeing all the cultural sectors, Salaband was only about music. So even if the average distance can, it, it, it can be similar, uh, it would be similar only for music, right? I cannot compare with all the other cultural industries. To my knowledge, there wasn't a similar study like this in Salaban for other specific cultural sectors. But if any of you know of any of this study, I'll be willing to, to take a look at that. So you can just... Uh, uh, email me or just uh, leave me a note. Um, but indeed, it was one of the landmarks of uh, geograph economic geography, let's say, in, in crowdfunding uh, from the beginning. It, it's interestingly one of the earliest discussions in crowdfunding literature. So I'm going to put my email here on the chat if you would like to get in touch later on as we're almost finishing the discussion. And um, well, Wojciech, do you have any particular common question for now? Uh, I have some you know, thoughts, but I can send them to you via email if that's okay with you. And I think one thing that for me is very curious is that uh, this hypothesis about digital rewards, uh, you know, it seems like a huge thing on Kickstarter and yet it didn't prove significant and I'm curious about that but we can discuss it uh, yep. other point so thank you very much everyone and thank you for the great discussion and uh, I encourage you to write to Carolina if you have any further comments and yes can I just say uh, thank you Wojciech for inviting me for this talk and also for the qualified questions I had this was exactly what I was uh, looking forward to. And um, I hope I see you further in other uh, discussions, other panels. Uh, I will take into account uh, your comments here. Uh, they were very, very relevant. So thank you very much for this qualified space for each that you're putting forward uh, with the lab. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you and see you everyone uh, at the next seminar, hopefully. Yes.